Hey, this is Mrs. Hickok, and I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the state test that is coming up. So as you know, there are two parts. There is the multiple choice part, and then there's what's called the performance task, and we call that PT, and that's basically the essay. And you will be given um, a prompt, and it'll either be, sorry that this is um, crazy, my little tripod isn't working. You'll be given either a narrative story to write, an argument essay, or an explanatory essay to do. It has been my experience that about half of the class gets argument, about a quarter of the class gets narrative, and a quarter of the class gets explanatory. But um, usually the majority of the kids get an argument essay. So um, I just wanted to kind of go over some things to remember. Number one, if you have an argument or an explanatory essay, please make sure that you put lots of evidence in there. So be sure to reference things according to source one, according to the name of the article. Um, some experts say, such as in source one or two, they're really looking for that. So make sure you put that in. If you are doing a narrative, um, plan out a beginning, a middle, an end. Um, it'd be wonderful if you could include some dialogue in there. Um, remember, every time somebody talks, it's a new line. So um, when you're writing, uh, make sure that you punctuate that correctly. Make it interesting. Make some tension or conflict in there. Don't just kind of do-do-do. But the big thing is use detail from the sources to show that you read them, kind of like we did with our astronaut story, with our narrative, okay? Um, argument. You will have time to plan it out. You need that attention getter, that hook to make us want to read. And then you have to take a side. Even if you don't really care in real life, if we keep the penny or ditch the penny, you must take a side, okay? And then you have to go into your reasons using evidence, not just your own things like, well, I think, no, no, no. Um, try to not use um, first person. Use that strong language. Use words like must instead of, well, maybe we should use words like have to and it is certain. And then, of course, the counter argument, show the other side. Now, others may say, or another side of the issue is, and also show evidence of um, that the other side would use. And then explain the fallacy in it. Explain why that does not work. Finally, conclude. And remember, the conclusion is kind of like a mirror to your first paragraph. They're like bookends that work together. Um, I always say drop the mic, leave it with a zinger, let us think about it. Would you want graffiti on your house? Boom. Okay. Argument explanatory. Often they're about like solar or something that has to do with science or history, but you're going to explain it. Now this one, you're not trying to convince us of anything. You're just taking a bunch of different information and putting it together. So again, a hook is always a great idea to get going and then kind of think what is the main topic, whether it's solar energy for a science fair or something, and then there's probably smaller bits underneath it, like the cost of solar or the um, benefits to the environment. So really try to organize it. You may just have two points. You might have third, depending on how many sources you have. But you're not trying to convince us of anything. And again, please do not use first person. And then wrap it up with a conclusion, which kind of mirrors your first one. Um, remember... <clears throat> that spelling and grammar definitely count. Organization definitely counts. We generally give two days for the performance task. Day one, you read your sources and kind of plan it out. Day two, you write it. Um, so definitely take your time with it. And I know you guys are going to be amazing. So um, we got this. A friend of mine brought me some Starbucks. So I'm out. <laughs>